In this video, we're going to talk about the Control 4 new Halo remote and how well it works and how to set it up in some kind of preferable configurations when using an Apple TV 4K. I've got the latest, of course, the 2022 model Apple TV 4K. I've been using this for a few weeks now and I think I've arrived at a pretty good configuration and a pretty good sense of like what it's able to do with the Apple TV. Spoiler alert, it's awesome and much improved from from prior Control 4 remotes. So let's break it all down. First, we're gonna start with a, a look at Control 4 Home Composer and take a look exactly how I've got the buttons configured, what the state of the driver. So in order to actually set up the Apple TV, I'm gonna go over here to the specific Apple TV instance uh, that's in the room. And we can see here from a documentation perspective, I'm using version 50 of the Apple TV, the Control 4 provided Apple TV driver, my dealer installer friend, Dan DiCarlo, set this up when he brought the Halo over. We can see the change log here, version 50, added support for voice control from the Control 4 Halo remote control. So there you go. If you are getting a Halo set up, you are gonna wanna make sure that your dealer, your installer, uh, actually sets up the Apple TV driver to go with it in terms of actually kind of setting things up, there's a whole kind of procedure that you have to go through with the Apple TVs and Control 4. They, they do do IP control, but they run through Apple HomeKit, so you kind of have to set up some bindings in HomeKit. And after that's all done, your the Control 4 uh, setup is actually able to see the Apple TV. We can see here I have two of them in this Apple TV selector, basically controlling which Apple TV in the house this instance of device is mapped to and here we have the home theater and then down below here under these button maps is really where i really really only made some custom settings and only a couple were really necessary by default i think there's a really good intelligent mapping of options and controls and, and actions to the existing buttons on the remote control so for the most part you can see here the, the majority of this stuff is really just set to do nothing except for these two and this is really the key thing that you would want to set up specifically for the Apple TV. So one is using the guide button to actuate what they call the TV home option. And the other is using the DVR button, which is just, I think, below it on the remote to do TV home with a hold. And so you have to do these, you have to get TV home and TV home hold mapped on the remote if you really want to be able to, to replicate all of the functionality, more or less, of what the actual Siri remote lets you do. And that's, that's really it. Um, if you notice too, I've got options in here, you know, send menu tap on on, send menu tap hold on off. You used to be able to put the Apple TV to sleep just kind of by holding the buttons. That doesn't really work anymore. So for using Apple TVs with Control 4, I actually recommend now and for myself, I run these as off as false actually. And I just let the, uh, I just let the Apple TV more or less stay on all the time. That results in reliable, like kind of uh, uh, always on, always synced, quick access, uh, and the power draw is, is basically nothing. All right, so we're back in the living room here. I've got the LG 83-inch G2 we've set up on the Apple TV input, and I've got the Siri remote and the new Control 4 Halo kind of side by side, and we'll go over some of the specific controls and, again, why we're using Guide and DVR, specifically how we map them uh, in the Control 4 driver. So regular operation and all that works just out of the box, of course. Up, down, left, right. Enter for the center gives us essentially the same functionalities that we have on the D-pad and the center button here. The one thing, the only thing that the Siri remote ends up retaining in functionality over the Control 4 Halo is the ability for this thing to work like a touchpad, to be able to swipe up and down and left and right right and jump through things faster you can't do that so over here we're clicking we're clicking but in a lot of cases you can click and hold to kind of fast scroll through things I personally only ever use the touchpad for scrubbing video so I pull up a movie I want to jump to maybe a specific part you know quickly get to an hour in or an hour and a half in and you're not doing that like 10 second skip at a time right so with the Siri remote you can you can pause you can swipe and you can jump through content real quick so if i show that off really quick of course i'm just playing black adam here i'm paused and i can take this remote and i can swipe left and right so if i really want to get far 
into the movie, right? I can swipe and I can do that really quick. If I'm using the Halo, there's no swiping. I'm stuck basically doing it bit by bit. However, you can kind of have it auto scrub for you. It goes up to a speed of four and that's the best you can get. So for all of the things that this does to replicate the Siri remote, losing this one piece of functionality, ultimately I'm okay with because again, we can get close enough. And some apps do allow you to do a little bit better like YouTube TV, for example, or YouTube itself, I think. You can hold left or right and it really, it really zips through pretty quick. So different apps uh, actually do a little bit better kind of approximating the swipe. Of course, we've got menu, we've got back, we've got all of the general kind of operational functions again that we get here from the, the back button. Menu and back on the Halo are both the functional equivalent of back on the Siri remote. They automatically bind uh, both of those to the same thing. Of course, the Siri integration is just awesome. That was one of the big things that this remote let you do that the prior SR260 and the Control 4 Neo didn't let you do. But now we can say, Siri, find me Top Gun Maverick. It takes the voice command, and there we go. So anything, there's no limitation here. I'm gonna go back because I don't wanna play any actual video in my background. But whatever Siri commands you could issue through the Siri remote to the Apple TV are all functionally replicatable or functionally equivalent using the Halo. It passes basically through the same APIs and I haven't found any restrictions. I haven't found anything that doesn't work. In my honorable mention, the one, the, the Siri command on the Apple TV that I love the most is the Siri, what did they say? When you're watching a piece of content and you didn't hear some speech, you, it wasn't clear uh, what a character might have said, man, hit that, hit that voice control and say, what did they say? The Apple TV will skip back some number of seconds, several seconds at least. It will automatically turn on the subtitles. It'll replay that little piece of content. You can, you can read what maybe your old man or woman ears didn't allow you to hear clearly. Boom, it'll play a little bit more. It'll automatically turn the subtitles back off and away you go. That's genius and I wish every other platform, every other video playback uh, platform would copy that from Apple. Unless of course they hold the patent, in which case don't copy it, I guess. Because it's an Apple TV, you know, and we have the ability to essentially do almost all of the control, playback control and all of that via the up, down, left, right and the OK button or using the transport controls, you really have a choice. But keep in mind that there's no intelligence, at least yet, in the new drivers between the Apple TV and kind of the rest of your Control 4 system. I do a lot of cool stuff with Control 4 and Kaleidoscape allowing lights to dim and lights to turn on and off and all of that stuff because the two devices actually communicate state and information to each other. Well, from, from a playback perspective, Apple TV and Control 4 are not yet doing that again. They used to a long time ago, but they're still not yet. I hope that comes uh, with the feature additions and expansions and improvements that we're gonna see because of the halos. You still can get at least a little bit of kind of coincidental intelligence out of Control 4 and, and the Halo versus using the Siri remote in a Control 4 system because there are play, pause, and stop triggers essentially in Home Composer where you, where you can add programming. So if I actually start playback of a movie using a Control 4 remote and an Apple TV using the play button and I stop playback using the stop button or I pause playback using the pause button, I can have my lights come up, I can have my lights go down, but again, that's because at least the, the indication of the specific button being pressed or the operation happening allows Control 4 to inject some programming. But if you start playback or stop playback using the enter button on the D-pad or the menu button, the back button to get back out of playback, note that it will not generate the same trigger to Control 4. And any, any tricky, cool lighting controls or other automation that you had linked to it will not actually work. I hope, I hope, I hope that this, the intelligent communication and state sharing that we get it in future versions of the drivers and future capabilities kind of coming with the halos. Also to note, I think for the Apple TV and the halo remote is essentially the number pad is non-functional. The number keys do nothing. The color keys, when you activate them on for an Apple TV, really do nothing unless you specifically bind them. But again, there's only so many operations off of this remote and there's only so much stuff that we need to bind. So let's talk about a couple of the more advanced features that we've now replicated using Guide 
and DVR that allow us to put the Siri remote away and forget about kind of using it forever. That's the ability, first of all, to force close an app. So if I have a Siri remote and I double tap guide and I come over here to the left, I can see my open apps and of course I can swipe up and force close an app. Sometimes you need to do that. That's very useful capability to have at your fingertips if an app isn't working right or you need to kind of reset its state or it, it gets into a state where it's basically stuck. Now, using the Control 4, using the Halo, we can do that by double tapping Guide now, which Guide is mapped to that home button here on the remote. I can go left on the Control 4, and if I press up a couple times, like a quick double tap of up, boom, I'm force closing applications using the Control 4 Halo, an operation that before required the touchpad on the Siri remote. That's awesome. The other menu that has been added to tvOS and the Apple TV more recently, I'm going to flip over here, is the, the quick or the control center. Basically they added the control center emulating what you get when you swipe down up on the upper right hand corner say of a of an iPhone or an iPad. If I press and hold home button, now I have my fly-in up here, it gives me the time, it gives me the date, Apple TV has really great profile support nowadays. So I have profiles set up for different members of the family. And we also have some quick access to other controls here, sleep um, and, and some other options, video game controllers and so on. So in order to get to this menu on the Halo, this is why we mapped basically home TV home hold to the DVR button. So boom, one press to the DVR button, and there we go. That's the equivalent, again, of holding this button on the Siri remote. And we're not giving up any capability there anymore to do that. And then, of course, when I'm in this menu, I can do up, down, left, right. And I can navigate around just using the regular controls. Nothing else needed, nothing else necessary. Dismiss it with the menu or the back button. And I apologize, I did have to obscure that a little bit uh, because there's the, the individual profiles for the family members are there. And it's sorry, but I, I don't need to share specific pictures and, and names of all the family members. Of course, the Siri remote now has pretty good buttons for volume, up and down, mute, and so on. We don't need to use that. When it comes to the Control 4 system, of course, you would have your Control 4 setup linked to whatever amplifier, receiver, preamp is your audio endpoint for the room and we would be controlling volume and all of that over here just fine. Same with power. We've got power buttons and stuff on the Siri remote, but of course Control 4 would be managing the power state of your room by itself already anyway. So there you go. I hoped, I had really hoped that when the Halos were announced that this would be able to truly be a one remote because with the Neos, honestly, I find myself reaching for the Siri remote all the time and actually took some extra steps in my system to be able to use the Siri remote over the Neo because of the features and capabilities and stuff that the Siri remote allows for the Apple TV that the Neo didn't. Now, Control 4 is doing the job again. And yes, this remote, the non-touch Halo, is very, very much akin to the SR260, and some of those button mappings, the guide, the DVR thing, are all accomplishable on the SR260, the main thing the SR260 doesn't give you is that Siri voice control. So I still think this thing is an upgrade. I still recommend it. I'm in a honeymoon period. It's still early days with this, and we'll see what they do with it. We'll see how they expand it. We'll see what new features and capabilities come. But so far, I am very impressed with the Halo remote, and I am very happy using this to control an Apple TV such that I think we, we have reached a point now where the Siri remote could go back in a drawer and this one can now do the job. So if you have any questions about this, anything else that I, I glossed over too quickly, anything else that you'd like me to cover with regards to controlling an Apple TV, specifically with Control 4 and the new Halos, let me know, sound off in the comments. Otherwise, please do all that regular YouTube stuff, like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Check out the last video where I did more of an overall review of the Halo itself more of a general conversation of my experience of using the remote for a few weeks. And if you would like to support the channel, check down in the description. We've got super thanks, channel memberships, Amazon affiliate links, and more. 
any support that you may feel inclined to provide is very much appreciated and those dollars will be rolled back into the channel for more things, more content, and a whole lot more to come. Thanks so much for watching and coming back for more home theater discussion and fun.